while China appears to be driving the art market, both at auctions in the United States and in China. Christie's just had its best season ever in Asia, sales up 68 percent over a year ago. With us today is the chairman and president of Christie's America, Mark Porter. Welcome back to In Business. Nice to be here. So China, London, New York, these are now the art world capitals? They are the three primary centers. The uh, sales in Hong Kong just ended a week ago, a half a billion dollars in sales in two weeks. Jewelry, Chinese contemporary art, porcelain, all the categories driving ahead. Now, it, typically, the art market domestically likes domestic art, right? Is that what's playing out, or are, are Chinese buyers uh, thirsting for American or European pieces? Um, in the beginning, in, in most markets, it's the regional art that's the driver, and that remains true in China today. The biggest categories are, in fact, Chinese contemporary art. But we've seen Chinese buyers from greater China, mainland China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, starting to move into Western art fields as well. Now, what we hear so often about China is, yes, there's tremendous growth. There is a new tremendous wealth, but there are worries about perhaps uh, overheating of that. When we say record sales in Asia, it lends to that idea that there is almost a bubble-like environment there. How do you characterize what you see in Hong Kong? Um, I think one has to look at each category. In the Asian sales, the sales in Hong Kong, there are many different categories. Uh, jewelry, which is the same jewelry as we sell in Geneva and in New York, and the price levels are global, set on a global basis. Uh, Chinese contemporary art is the field that's growing so much and that people pay a lot of attention to. But in fact, the prices of Chinese contemporary works of art are only now reaching the level that Western painters, American and European painters of the post-war period have made. So it's a really, really much more of a catch-up mm -hmm. and an appreciation of the works of art that were produced in China rather than a bubble environment. There have been uh, rumors throughout the art world uh, that you may have an auction yourself or perhaps even list publicly as a company in Asia. What can you tell us about that? I think um, we've always said that we're, we're not in preparation for listing. Would you consider one in Asia if you were? A listing in Hong Kong? I just, we're not considering a listing at all. At all. All right. Uh, well, if you can't talk about that, you can tell us about the spring sales that we just went through here in the United States. And, and in fact, world auction record for this Andy Warhol painting. I think we can put it up uh, on screen for our viewers right now. It's a, a fantastic picture, uh, four panels of Andy Warhol's self-portrait, four very different shades of blue. It captured the market's attention and made almost $40 million. $40 million. The buyer, a Asian, a buyer, American? Anonymous. Anonymous. So we, we don't know who that was. Uh, but we still are seeing a tremendous amounts of being paid for that. Uh, as we just said, world auction record. You also had a world art auction record for an artist, Cindy Sherman, in the post-war uh, contemporary sale, please. Um, what, what we've been seeing in the post-war and contemporary field is that the most blue chip of artists, and that these days is Andy Warhol. Uh, we sold 25 Warhols for a total of $100 million. Cindy Sherman, her primary image, the one most identified with the artist. Um, the most blue chip artists, the most identifiable images continue to outpace all other kinds of objects in terms of the appreciation year by year. Now, I know in terms of upcoming auctions, you're excited to have the estate of Elizabeth Taylor, who just recently passed on. But what can you tell us about what's coming on the block? Well, uh, Elizabeth Taylor had the world's greatest collection of jewelry, and we'll be offering that in December, in time for Christmas, uh, after a worldwide tour uh, that includes New York, Los Angeles, London, uh, Dubai, and Hong Kong. So people around the world will get to see the jewelry. And also she was a very fine collector of Impressionist paintings. And we'll be offering her paintings, including her Van Gogh, in an evening sale in London in February. So a global marketing effort and a global selling effort. And there'll be tremendous attention for that, no doubt, uh, particularly her jewelry. Thank you very much for telling us what to look forward to. And we'll be tracking the results, uh, particularly uh, of that jewelry sale in December.